Welcome back to a park here on Staten Island. We're going for a little walk. And today we're starting a new series talking about action cameras. We're about to enter summer. A lot of people are going on adventures, going on vacations, going on hikes. And you may want a camera that can withstand a little abuse or just a nice little camera to record your adventures with your friends, your family. And so today I wanted to go through some of the main competitors in the action camera space, what I like, what I don't like, some of the headaches, and who might best fit each of those cameras. In this comparison, I'm gonna look at the Insta360 GO 2, the DJI Action 2, and the camera I'm recording this on, the GoPro Hero 10. I will also discuss some other GoPros uh, that I've had and used through the years, but those are gonna be the main ones we focus on. I'm gonna do an episode on each, and then once I finish that episode on each, I'm going to do a summary video where I just kind of talk about everything in perspective of each other because they're all a little different. They all fit a little different um, for kind of the purpose that they're meant for and what they are best at. So without further ado, let's get into it. Today, we're talking about the Insta360 Go 2. Yes, Go 2. <laughs> let's go. With each camera, I want to start talking about the pros and then I want to talk about the cons. So starting with the pros for the Insta360 Go, it is extremely small and lightweight. It is 26 grams, the camera itself. So if you use the little magnetic pendant uh, to put it on you, or you hold it, or you stick it to something, it is small, discreet, out of the way, super lightweight. So if you're putting it on a small drone, perfect. RC car, perfect. It's also really durable and waterproof. So if you wanna hand this little peanut sized camera to your toddler, perfectly fine. Uh, another big plus is obviously I just mentioned the durability. Uh, the little peanut shaped thing is incredibly durable. You can kind of beat it up, throw it around, and it'll take whatever punishment you dish out. The lens is replaceable, which is another big, big plus, which we're going to talk about again in next episode. And it, um, it's just, it's really simple to use. It basically has one button on the camera itself that you tap to start recording, tap to stop recording, and then two buttons on the little charging case, which can also start recording, change settings, and so on. Another benefit of that charging case is it actually can act as its own tripod. On the back of it, it has these two little feet that can kind of extend off the back of it. Uh, I put a protective case on my charging case because I don't really use those tripod feet, which does render them useless. Uh, but they are there. If you don't have a protective case on it like I do, you can use those little feet as a little tripod. So if you're sitting down, want to record a quick video of your uh, little uh, baby or your puppy while you're playing, perfect. Another big benefit of the Insta360 GO 2 is that it is magnetic. Um, like some of the other action cameras we're going to talk about, all of its mounts rely on this little magnet system. So when you use it as a chest camera, you basically just take a little necklace pendant, drop it in your shirt, and then you just stick the camera to your chest. Could not be more convenient. It is very secure. Uh, I have not had mine fall off yet. I haven't done anything too crazy with it. So again, take that as it is. But I think it's a very convenient system overall. And the same goes for the hat mounts and other mounts that come with it. All of them use the same little magnetic system really convenient. You don't have to deal with thumb screws, which we're going to talk about later in another episode. Um, but overall, I think it is a great system and it's a big plus for that Insta360 Go. Another plus, which kind of all the action cameras have, is it does charge via USB-C. Uh, the only downside is you can't use a USB-C to USB-C cable to plug it into, say, a MacBook Pro. You do have to use a uh, USB-A to USB-C adapter to plug the Insta360 GO cable into. It's a little bit of a hassle, but it's kind of one of those headaches that you know and understand if you use a lot of USB-C devices. One benefit that the Insta360 GO 2 has, like all the other 360 cameras out there, is that you can change the aspect ratio, the uh, lens shape, like the distortion of the lens, whether you want it narrow, wide, ultra wide, um, and also whether or not you have image stabilization and horizon lock on after you record the footage. So unlike GoPro, where you have to turn on real steady go before you start recording, here you do it afterwards inside the app. And also the Insta360 app is really, really, really good. It's probably, 
if not the best, definitely the second best of this group. It is one of, the, I think, the biggest benefits to the Insta360 Go is that reframing and ability to basically manipulate and set the footage the way you want after you record it. Um, the number of times I've had GoPro or uh, DJI footage that I've looked at afterwards and been like, oh, I really wish that I had turned off image stabilization or turned on image stabilization after I've taken uh, the camera out at the end of the night and reviewed the footage. So it's kind of one of those things that's a real nice to have. And I hope other camera makers start to introduce this kind of feature because it is immensely useful and it means you don't have to think about it before you go out and shoot. That I think is a huge, huge benefit for somebody who just wants something they can throw in their chest and hit record and capture everything that they wanna capture. In relation to this comparison between the DJI Action, the Insta360 GO, and the GoPro Hero 10, the Insta360 GO is also the least expensive. Uh, there are some reasons for that. It lacks some of the features of those other cameras, but it is $300 and not uh, $550, or whatever GoPro is charging for a Hero 10 with their GoPro subscription. It's a benefit. I think it needs to be included. There you go. If price is important to you, Insta360 Go, big check mark. Let's switch over and talk about some of the cons of the Insta360 Go. And the first one has to be workflow. What do I mean by workflow? Well, you can't use the camera while it's charging unless it's in its little case. So if you're using it on a drone, you basically have to pause while it recharges in its little case before you send it out again. There is no removable memory in the case or the uh, Insta360 Go itself. So once you fill that thing up, you have to have a laptop, a tablet, or some other device to pull that footage off. It is a little bit of a hassle, especially if you're out recording a bunch of different footage, you may have to pause and basically download all that footage. So it's a little bit of a frustration, a little bit of a hassle, but overall it's definitely manageable for its benefits. In addition to the workflow struggles for the Insta360 Go, uh, that case does present another problem because it's the only way to charge the Insta360 Go. So if you lose it, if you break it, you have no way to charge your camera. Um, I believe you can get replacements, but they're not like easily locatable on Insta360 Go, Insta360's website. While it does make the Insta360 Go super durable and super compact, the fact that it doesn't really have a great screen uh, or easy to navigate menu is definitely a downside. Um, it, again, it's kind of a trade-off whether you want small, compact, lightweight, or basically a touch screen and easy to use men uh, menus. So it's just something you have to live with. And then the last, um, I guess we'll call it con of the Insta360 Go is because it is so small, it definitely has the smallest image sensor of these cameras in this comparison. It also only records in uh, was it uh, 12, was it 12, four, no, not 1240 by 720, uh, 2650 by 1440, actually really it records 2650 by 2650, uh, but it's something you do have to consider. It is not going to record in 4K. The other two cameras in this comparison do record in 4K. That's really all there are for cons for the Insta360 Go. Uh, so all in all, I think it makes a great little camera if you're looking for something that's just set it, forget it, and capture all of those little moments in life. I think for new parents with a baby, it's great. It might be a choking hazard. I didn't think about that. But overall, I think for people who just want a quick, easy to access action camera that works with iPhone, works with Android, uh, easy to use, easy to edit, easy to share to Instagram, TikTok, all the rest, I think, the Insta360 Go is a perfect little camera. And if you fly FPV drones or drive remote control cars, this is also a great action camera for you because it's easy to attach, super lightweight, and really, really durable, and a replaceable lens. So that's who I would say is the best uh, buyer for the Insta360 Go. So that's the Insta360 Go, the good, the bad, for me, I love the camera. I think it's a great addition to your toolbox or as an only camera. I would highly, highly recommend it. Next week, we're gonna get into the DJI Action 2. So 
with that said, I will catch you all in the next video. Please subscribe. Thank you for joining me on this video. I will catch you all later. Peace. Bye.